I have a creamy, delicious vanilla bean ice cream recipe for you guys. So let's get started. So I am super excited to be back you guys making another recipe video for you. I have been so busy lately but we'll talk about that in my update video. Right now let's get into this um, ice cream video. So we're going to get started with our ingredients. There are a few key things that I think play a huge part in making um, creamy keto ice cream. The main thing is with regular ice cream, the fat from the milk and the cream and all that stuff really plays a huge part in making the ice cream creamy and whatnot. And you know, we can't use whole milk on keto and so you want to be able to still get that same effect but use different ingredients. And so I think I found the perfect combination. We're going to start off with using a stainless steel pot here. If you have stainless steel, please use that to make your ice cream because other um, types of cookware tend to let the flavors of what you previously cooked in it linger. And so you don't want to have, you know, this beautiful vanilla ice cream that you're making and catch a hint of like, I don't know, spaghetti sauce or something that maybe you cooked in the pot previously. So if you have stainless steel, use it. If you don't, just make sure you give your pot a really good cleaning, maybe do a pre-soak so that way it can try to eliminate any extra flavors that might, you know, get into your ice cream. So that's the first thing for making a really good ice cream. Use stainless steel. Now we're going to start off with our milk. I am using cashew milk. I always use cashew milk. I'm not a huge fan of almond milk, but also what I found is, is that cashew milk is much creamier. So I really like to use this for anything really. So we're going to start off with a cup of that that we're going to put into our pot here. Okay, the next thing we want to use is a cup of cream. And now, as you might know, some of you might know, some of you may not know, is, you know, when you start keto, you get told that heavy whipping cream is really great, really awesome, and use that, and people use a lot of it. However, there are some hidden carbs in heavy whipping cream. So for like the one tablespoon that it shows on the carton, it has like 0.4 grams of carbs per that one tablespoon and so I didn't want to use that in this ice cream so I found an alternative you guys it's this brand it's silk and it is an alternative heavy cream it's made from coconuts and from all the research that I did this is um, it has zero net carbs so you're not going to be adding any carbs now if I'm wrong about that you guys please let me know in the comments but from all my research this has no extra carbs. So this is what I'm going to be using instead of using heavy cream. And go ahead and use a spatula to get all of that scraped out of your measuring cup just to make sure you're getting all of it in there. Okay, the next thing we're going to be adding is some sunflower liquid um, lectin and I'm adding this because it is a great way to um, it's basically an emulsifier and even though we're going to be adding eggs to this recipe and that also acts as an emulsifier emulsifier sorry um, I also wanted to add this because I felt that when I made ice cream before and I didn't use it when I made it the last time and I added this it made it so much creamier and it just really helped it during the freezing process so you only need a small bit of this you're only going to be using uh oh you're only going to be using an eighth of a teaspoon just a small amount you guys now the next thing we need to talk about is the sweetener you guys I have you know I use pure I love pure however when I've previously previously made ice cream using pure it just I don't know it just didn't turn out the way that I really wanted it to um, texture wise using pure so I 
heard about allulose and so I bought that and I feel as though allulose works really well for ice cream and so that's what we're going to be using and as you might may know or may not know allulose is not a one-to-one -one sweetness ratio so you're going to need to add extra and we're going to be adding I'm adding in a cup and one-fourth but you're going to want to sweeten this to your taste so that could be anywhere from one cup up to maybe a cup and a half a cup and three-fourths just sweeten it to your taste but in mine I'm adding one cup and a fourth and the last thing we're going to add is just a pinch of salt because as you may know salt just brings out the sweetness all the time no matter if you're baking or whatever salt brings out the sweetness so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this eye on to medium and we're just we just want to let this heat and get warm we're not really trying to get this to a boil we don't want this to get scalding hot we just want to heat it till it's warm and so I'm going to go ahead and just use my spatula here and just mix all my ingredients in and you you may notice that um that the leptin is not breaking down just yet it'll happen later on in the process um as you keep um making this ice cream because we're going to have to put this back on the eye again so don't worry if you still see streaks of the lectin in there it will continue to break down as we cook it the second time and the mixture gets a bit warmer so some of you may have saw on my social media that I posted some ice cream that I've been making lately and um, I asked some of you guys like what flavor would you want to see a video of and to me the consensus the cons <laughs> to me um, it seemed like most of you prefer to do just a plain vanilla that way it gives you options for toppings and whatnot and so forth and so I thought that was a really good idea to just do a vanilla video um, on the YouTube channel now at a later date I will post more um, ice cream videos probably um, but for this video we're going to stick with just vanilla however some of you guys really wanted to know about the um, raspberry cheesecake ice cream that I made and if you want to see a video of that check out my patreon um, on there I post exclusive recipes only for my patreon members and so on there will be the video of the um, the I think I'm gonna do it blackberry this time but you can do it strawberry you can do it raspberry but I think I'm gonna make it be a blackberry cheesecake ice cream for that video so if you want to see that go ahead and check out my patreon and I'll probably put that somewhere down on the screen here and you can go ahead and sign up for whatever tier you feel um, most comfortable with and then you'll be able to check out some of those exclusive recipes that I post on there okay now that our mixture is starting to heat up I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open up a vanilla bean since we're making vanilla ice cream um, the the quality of vanilla that you use in it is really important you guys because you want that flavor to really jump out at you and you want it to really taste like vanilla ice cream so I'm gonna be using a vanilla bean here I got this off of Amazon um, the brand is vanilla bean kings and it comes with 10 of them in the package it's um, vacuum sealed and it costs about 30 bucks for 10 of them and I think that's a really good deal for 10 vanilla beans is they're not really hard they feel you know pretty good they smell amazing so I would suggest you know finding a good quality vanilla bean to put into your ice cream however if you can't um, find any um, you might be able to find this at your grocery store it's ground vanilla and this is pure Madagascar ground vanilla and I got this at my grocery store my local grocery store um, the vanilla beans they had I didn't like the way they looked and so I purchased that and it works great it smells great that that's gonna cost you about 20 bucks I think 
So if you can find something along those lines, then get that if you can't get vanilla bean. And so what you want to do here now is just go ahead and split it down the middle because we want to scrape all of those beautiful seeds out of it and get that added to our um, mixture here. And we want to be careful. Let me turn this down because I don't want this boiling. I'm actually going to remove it from the heat right now because I don't want that to boil. And be sure not to cut all the way through it. You don't want to split it in half. You just want to split the top of it open. So be careful with that. And so see, this is what you're wanting to do. Just scrape all those lovely beans out of there. And we're going to put that into our pot here. And after you get the um, beans out of there, you want to go ahead and you want to toss the um, the pot of it in too. We want to go ahead and put all that in there so it can get that nice, beautiful flavoring. And let's give this a stir. And as I said, do not be alarmed by the lectin you see. As this cooks down more, that will melt into the recipe very nicely. So just give this a stir. And already it's smelling so good, you guys. It's smelling really great. Once you get that vanilla bean in there, it really starts to give off its aroma. Okay, and so what we want to do now is we want to cover this and we want to let this steep for the next 30 minutes so that way all these flavors can marinate together and really, really make us a nice flavorful ice cream. So we're gonna let that sit for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we need to do next. All right, so it's been 30 minutes and now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get six egg yolks in a bowl and I've already got that right here and what we want to do is get our egg yolks all nice and whisked, whisked together and then we're going to take our warm mixture here and pour it into our eggs slowly and mix it until it's all nice incorporated. Okay, so go ahead and remove the um, vanilla bean And just set that on a paper towel because we are not done with this yet. Okay. And so now we want to slowly pour this in and begin to whisk this together. And you want to make sure that the temperature is nice and warm because you don't want to scramble your eggs. And you want to make sure you continuously whisk the whole time. makes the ice cream so creamy is when you make a custard. I feel as though that is the best way, the best method to get a nice, creamy, delicious ice cream. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and turn our eye back on and just keep it at about a medium heat. And we're going to go ahead and pour this back into the pot over here and we're going to let this heat until it gets thicker and it's coating the back of our spatula here. And it's probably best to use a spatula like this or maybe a wooden spoon so that way you can, um, you know, not really scratch up your cookware and all that stuff. And those pockets of seeds are starting to loosen up, you guys. 
and disperse all throughout this mixture. And so you're starting to see those little bitty black flakes instead of larger pockets of the vanilla bean. And now we want to keep this moving as it heats up. And so this can vary for how long this can take. Um, I found the last time I did this, it took about 15 minutes or so, but another time it took like 11, 12 minutes. So it just kind of varies. So don't rush it, take your time and let this come to just the right temp and get nice and thick so that way you're going to end up with a beautiful ice cream you guys all right so our mixture should be just about at the proper thickness so we're going to go ahead and give that a test you probably can't see it very well because of the color of this mixture but there is a layer on the back of the spoon and what you want to do to test it is you want to go ahead and swipe your finger right down the middle of that and if the mixture is still sitting there on the spoon opposite the clean spot you just wiped away then it's at the proper thickness and you can go ahead and turn your eye off and remove it from the heat now you will still see some bits of the um of the lectin in there that's fine what we're going to do next you guys is we're going to go ahead and pour our mixture through a strainer and in this bowl here i've got an ice bath right here with a metal bowl and i prefer to use a metal bowl for this because i love the way that the metal bowl it will either conduct heat or it will um it will be uh, uh it will help promote coolness so when we go ahead and put our mixture in the refrigerator this nice stainless steel bowl is going to get really cold and help our mixture get really cool so that's why i like to use a stainless steel bowl during this process so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put a strainer over the bowl here and i want to be very careful <laughs> very careful because um you know the bowl is sitting in the water and it's kind of teetering back and forth so I want to be careful not to um, tip my bowl at all and so now what I want to do is go ahead and start pouring my mixture into this here strainer and I want to try yeah so you really want to scrape your pot because you don't want to leave any of that mixture behind because that's all going to go into your ice cream. And now what we're doing here is we're getting behind any bits of egg that might have got cooked up and the rest of the lectin that did not get um, incorporated into the mixture. You don't want bits of that being in your delicious ice cream. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn off the sound for one of my devices. okay and if you can see this from above there is a little bit of cooked egg in here and some little brown bits of the lectin so that is why it's so important you guys to go ahead and run it through the strainer and just go ahead and scrape the bottom of that and get all that nice beautiful custard off the bottom and into this cream we have here and this is one cup of cream if I didn't mention that before that is one cup of the alternative coconut heavy cream in a bowl right here I don't think I mentioned that earlier sorry and so now what we want to do we want to go ahead and whisk this together over this nice ice bath And I just like to get it a little bit incorporated before I add in some vanilla extract. And I know you're probably thinking like you put the vanilla bean in there, is it enough? You know what, I think it's it needs the extract though, I really do. 
And so you wanna make sure, again, that you want to use good quality stuff for this ice cream because its only flavor is going to be vanilla. And so this is one that I get from my local grocery store. It's called Zanilli and I like it. I really do like it. And if you can find this at your grocery store, um, I'd recommend you give it a try and see how you like it. And I personally only use this when I'm doing things like making a vanilla cake or ice cream. You know, something where the vanilla is the star of the show. You really want to use good quality stuff. And so this will run you about $20 a bottle. And so we're going to use three-fourths of um, a teaspoon. And I got these amazing teaspoons, you guys, recently that like totally breaks down well measuring spoons I should say that totally breaks the spoons down into more options and I just totally love the fact that I've got a three-fourths of a teaspoon like that is so awesome I'm actually gonna do a video showing you guys some of my top essentials in my kitchen and I will be talking to you about the uh, measuring spoons and stuff that I found okay so go ahead and get that added to your ice cream mixture and you want to go ahead and keep mixing this up over this nice ice water bath here because we want to get the temperature of this mixture brought down some before we put it in our refrigerator and you'll notice that once you add the custard to the cream the the yellow color of the custard will become a little paler so it won't be as strongly yellow And I'm just going to give this a quick check. It's almost ready. I just want to let it sit in here just a little longer and get a little bit cooler. And you will notice once you strain it that you see no more bits of the lectin like that. All you see is the beautiful flakes of the vanilla beans. Okay, now I think this is ready. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add back the um, this vanilla bean pod here just because we want to go ahead and get as much of that vanilla flavor as possible. So go ahead and add yours back into the bowl. Now for those of you who didn't use it and um, you only use maybe the ground vanilla like I told you, um, that it should be fine. but using the vanilla bean and letting it sit in there I feel like it just gives it you know just a little bit more oomph of vanilla flavor and now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put this in a container that has a nice good lid on it that'll keep it nice and closed and sealed um, that's why I really love these bowls it's a metal bowl it comes with a lid it's really awesome so I really do love it and so I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on here and I'm gonna store this in the refrigerator for at least eight hours you guys um, Sometimes I leave it in longer depending on when I do this. I usually would do this um, earlier the day before. So then it can get, you know, at least 12 hours to sit and let the flavors all come together. So I usually like to let my um, ice cream mixtures sit for at least 12 hours. But I think by the time um, I'm supposed to go back and film the rest of this it will have only sat for maybe eight hours so yeah we're gonna let this sit in our refrigerators and let it get all nice and cold and chilled and then we are going to put it in our ice cream machine you guys and that is when the magic is going to happen and so you guys will see me back here eight hours from now but it will be a blink for you all right see you soon so as you can see, it is the next day. It is around 2.45 in the afternoon. And so my ice cream has been sitting in the refrigerator for about um, nine and a half hours. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And it has this lid on top that you can twist and lock into place so it won't 
open. You untwist it, you take the lid off, and inside is the bowl. So we're just gonna take this out. It's got a paddle. And now I'm gonna place that back inside because we want that inside when we pour in our mixture. And I've got my mixture right here. It's nice and cold. Let's take the lid off. Mmm, it smells so good, you guys. Okay, and now I'm gonna find my little tongs because if you remember, we put that vanilla pod back in there. So now I'm just gonna go searching through here and find it. And it's all nice and thick and creamy, you guys. Oh my goodness. There it is. Like this ice cream is going to be amazing, I'm telling you. All right, now that that's out, we just wanna go ahead and get this poured into our bowl here. And I think my bowl is, it's either a one and a half or a two quart size. And so I think that's the perfect size. And I don't feel as though it needs to be bigger than that. I'm not even sure if you can get it bigger than that. But let's go ahead and get this into our machine. And don't forget to scrape your bowl, get all that beautiful mixture out of there. Okay, and if you can see above me, it looks delicious already. Like it has got beautiful, beautiful flakes of the vanilla bean all dispersed throughout. It looks amazing. It smells great. And so now you just wanna set it back into the machine. Put your bowl, whatever type of machine you're using, get your bowl in there. Um, if you're using the machines where you freeze the bowl it'll already be sitting in the machine so you don't have to worry about that um and truthfully i could have just poured this in here while i was in the machine i just wanted to show you guys uh what was inside this thing so go ahead and get your lid put on lock it in place and i'm gonna turn my power on and this gives me several different options you guys that's the other thing i love about this machine it gives me an ice cream it gives me a yogurt, it gives me a cooling only, which means that I can go ahead and get this pre-cooling before I put my ice cream in. And it gives me a mix only, where it will mix my mixture. So that's why I love having this. It just, it has more options than just the one where you freeze the bowl. So I'm gonna leave it on the ice cream and I'm just gonna hit the start button. And it's set for 60 minutes and I like to leave mine I think by default it comes set on 60 minutes and I like to leave mine on that because depending on the type of ice cream the it kind of the time frame will um, vary so I just like to set my own timer and come back and check on it because I know I don't need to go past 60 minutes so I'm gonna head go ahead and hit the start button and you can hear it going and it's a little loud but to me it's not like um, horribly loud like I can't tolerate the sound so I'm gonna let this go um, for the next 30 to 45 minutes I think this batch of ice cream needs to go for and then I'll come back and we'll get this out of here and put into our ice cream container and I'll talk to you about that when we come back so it's been about 40 minutes about 40 41 minutes and I feel as though my ice cream is at just the right consistency now if you want you can totally eat yours soft serve like this but I'm gonna stick mine in the freezer because I want to let it get just a little bit firmer now if I was going to um, if I was having dinner right now and I'm about to have dessert, I would totally eat this right now because I love my ice cream soft serve. But I want to show you guys how great this container is. Some of you may already have this. If you don't, you guys, this is a double insulated ice cream container. And you guys, I'm telling you, I swear by this thing. 
it keeps my ice cream super creamy and just such a nice um, texture like it, it, it's just great it, it makes it firm it lets it get firm but you know when I go eat it you can press on it and be able to indent it some and it's not soft but it's not super hard super firm if you know what I mean and I'm gonna show you that after I let this sit in the refrigerator um, I'm not sure how long I'm gonna let this freeze because I do want to get this video done but I'm gonna try to let it sit in there as long as possible because I do want to try this ice cream for you on camera so um, it might not get to the texture that I want it to get to today but I'm telling you guys trust me it will get firm but not overly hard and it'll still be creamy so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and take out this I mean look at that beautiful oh my goodness I'm so sorry about that I swore I turned the sound off of my phone look how creamy that is look how rich this looks that is that um that coconut uh, uh, heavy whipping cream like it does such a great job and also the eggs oh there goes the machine it's going off sorry um, that's also the eggs and turning this thing into a custard this is what gives you this beautiful texture for your ice cream that's what's making it all nice and silky that bit of um, lectin we put in there to help emulsify all of this and keep it together and keep it all nice and just beautiful you guys this is such a beautiful beautiful mixture of ice cream and being that it's vanilla you can go ahead and top this with some strawberry syrup some sugar-free strawberry syrup chocolate syrup I actually have some in my fridge I have the Walden Farms brand I think it's Walden Farms but yes so I'm totally looking forward to doing that also I have made ice cream cone you guys and I just I have been loving eating this ice cream with ice cream cones and that video will be coming soon it won't be out by the time this comes out but it will be coming right after because I mean I can't share an ice cream recipe with you guys and not tell you how to make cones it gives you you know if you like ice cream cones I'm so glad to be able to give you that back or it gives your kids a great low carb option oh my goodness it doesn't want to come out hold on Ay -yoy. I've never had this problem before maybe my bowl was a little wet before I put it in goodness let's see Oh my goodness. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, finally. Okay, so now that I've got some things out of the way, you can see how thick and beautiful this ice cream is and how it just goes right into that container. I mean, just look at that, you guys. And I know you probably can't see this from overhead because I have to have the bowl right in the way but you should be getting a good frontal shot of this coming out of the the um the ice cream canister here i mean it is just so thick it is sticking to the spoon it is really really good you guys and so now this is where the magic is going to happen this container is going to do its job it's going to do wonderful work and keep your ice cream fresh it is not gonna let it get um, a bunch of ice crystals in it I'm telling you it's gonna be amazing this um, container here costs $15 and so I think it's well worth it you guys um, if you use other containers like I've used some paper ones um, I've used some um, what else kind uh, some other plastic ones that weren't double insulated and when I use those the ice cream would get hard and so while you can use that if you want to keep your ice cream nice and creamy and you don't want to have to sit and wait for it to thaw out then go ahead and invest in this container if you intend to make 
a lot of ice cream or maybe not even a lot but you know you don't want to do all that hard work for the ice cream and then it's not going to be you know as beautiful as all the work you put into making it so i'm going to go ahead and put this in the freezer and let this freeze for probably about three or four hours before i come back and then i can show you guys what we have so see you guys in a bit all right so it's been um over a day since i've let this freeze uh by the time I wanted to do this yesterday, it got a little too late and I was outside of my eating window, so I'm gonna do this today. Um, the one thing that I will tell you is that this container, you're gonna have to let it sit um, longer than what you normally would because it is double insulated. So I'll tell you that going into it. Also, one other thing I should mention, and I will correct this in the video when I say it, is, I put the wrong amount of vanilla in this recipe. You're gonna wanna put one and a half teaspoons. I only did three fourths of a teaspoon and that's because I was thinking about the half um, amount that I did previously to test the recipe. I only made half a batch. And so you're gonna want to put in one and a half teaspoons. So I'll make sure I make that correction. And one final thing before I reveal this if you don't want to spend that much money on vanilla, I know you know vanilla can be really expensive, then you're just gonna wanna use extra vanilla of whatever kind of vanilla that you are using. So if you don't have vanilla bean or um, the ground vanilla and all you have is vanilla extract, then make sure you use extra. I'd probably say somewhere around like three teaspoons, maybe a little more, but you're gonna wanna taste it as you're going so you can see if it's got enough vanilla for you. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take this lid off and show you guys what our ice cream is looking like. And so, as I said, it is still very soft, very creamy. Um, I'm gonna go this way. You see that? It just goes so, so smoothly. Look at that, you guys. And this has been in my freezer for over 24 hours. Now, I'll tell you, it can get harder than this. It can get harder than this, but you're gonna have to let it sit a little longer. It's because, like I said, it's double insulated, but it can get harder because you saw the pictures of my other ice cream. So it will get harder. And I wish it was harder right now, but I want to finish up this video. So I'm just going to have to deal with what I've got right here. And so I'm going to add a little syrup and stuff. Oh my goodness, can you be still? My daughters decided to bomb my video today because they wanted to be able to eat the ice cream. That's pretty much it. So now that I've got that into the container here, I'm going to use some of the Walden's Farm um, sugar-free chocolate syrup. I've never tried this before, so we're just gonna see what this tastes like on here. And I'm just gonna add just a touch. I mean, it smells good. Oh, I'm dribbling. I'm so dribbling. Uh. Okay. It reminds me of, oh, what's that candy? I used to love them. Oh, it reminds me of a Tootsie Roll, you guys. Oh, totally reminds me of Tootsie Roll. Okay, and then obviously you gotta put some whipped cream on it. And I love this sugar-free Land O'Lakes one. Oh my goodness, you guys. If you can get this, buy this. It's so thick and creamy and rich and it's just delicious. And I'm not gonna put too much on here like I normally would. I'm not even gonna lie, you guys. Normally, I would load this thing up, but I don't want you guys seeing me like that. Truthfully, I would lick that too, but you guys don't need to see me like that. I'm so serious. I would do all this stuff. Okay, so let's take a spoon, take a spoon, take a spoon, and let's dig into this ice cream. That is smooth and creamy and so rich. And you taste pecans? How do you taste pecan? Mmm. You guys, that right there, that is good. That is thick, 
creamy keto ice cream you guys I don't know if you can say any other version has been this thick this creamy now it hasn't completely frozen over and so I actually have a lot of stuff in my freezer right now so that could be contributing to why it's not completely frozen because when I made my other ice creams letting them sit overnight they were completely frozen <laughs> but right now my freezer is stuffed so that could be playing a part as to why it hasn't completely frozen over just yet so it should only take overnight to freeze like I don't see why it would take longer than that but I've got a lot of stuff going on in my freezer right now but this is the real deal you guys even when it's completely frozen oh my god this is just dribbling everywhere I should probably stop eating mm -hmm. I should stop eating this because I still have another ice cream video I have to do and I really want to eat that one but this is good too oh you guys you're not eating anymore I mean I'm not gonna eat this whole yeah. thing Oh, you guys are waiting to oh my god they're so embarrassed they're like oh we're gonna wait till you cut the camera off i'm gonna i'm gonna take one more bite and then i'm gonna leave it alone but as i said this is legit creamy delicious you're not gonna get it any better than this as i've told you earlier i think the key to a creamy keto ice cream one you have to make it into a custard that really helps get it all nice and thick and rich and creamy. Two, use the um, use the alternative heavy whipping cream. Cut out those carbs, but still get that nice, rich creaminess that you want. Three, I would suggest using cashew milk instead of using almond milk. I just feel like it's thicker and richer than almond milk, so use that one. Four. Don't forget that one eighth of a teaspoon of the um, sunflower lectin. And then five. I said there was only four, but there are five. Five. This ice cream container. This is going to change the game for your ice cream. You mix all that together and you're going to have yourself one heck of an ice cream that you're going to be proud of. You're going to want to eat it and make it all the time. And even though we all love Rebel, or at least a lot of us love Rebel, and there's a couple other brands out there that are pretty good, you're going to be proud of your own, though. And you're going to want to eat your own. Why run to the store when you can make a great batch yourself? So I am going to leave the nutritional facts for this in the description of the video because I don't have it on hand. I should have been better prepared, you guys. I know. And... Um, I think that's going to be all I have for today, you guys. I think that's going to be it. So, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Where are your thumbs up? See, this is why I can't have them in the videos. They don't do the things. <laughs> don't do the ending. Give it. Okay, I need to stop. I need to put that down. Give me a big thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ding that little bell so you can get notifications every time I upload a new video. And until next time, you guys, bye. I timed it. I timed it perfectly. <laughs>